Today we're going to be building this mug. It's made from a lofted geometry. As you can see the bottom is an octagon and the top is a circle and so we'll use a loft to connect those two shapes. We'll also shell it out so that it's hollow and add a handle that's made from a swept feature. Now as we do this we're going to have a target that we're designing for. We want the mug to hold 16 fluid ounces plus a little bit extra uh, on the top so it doesn't overflow. So 16 fluid ounces is about 28 and a half cubic inches. We'll be shooting for 30 cubic inches as the internal volume of our mug. So let me close this. And we'll start out in SolidWorks with a new part. And we'll sketch in the top plane. And the first thing we'll sketch is the bottom, which is an octagon. We'll pick the polygon tool and change the number of sides to 8 and simply drag out an octagon from the center. I'll pick one of the sides and make it horizontal just so that the parts align the way we want it. Then we'll dimension from one side to an opposite side and we'll start out by making that 1.75 inches. Okay. And there's our first sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and close this sketch. And now we need to make the top, which is going to be 5 inches above the bottom. So I'll pick the top plane, and while I'm holding down the control key, and I see the move arrows, I'm going to drag this upward, which will create a new plane parallel to the top plane. We set the distance at 5, and hit the check mark, and you can see we've got a new plane. Uh, where the top of the part is going to be. And with that plane selected, let's pick the circle tool and drag out a circle from the center and put a dimension on that. And we want this to be three and a half inches. Okay. And now I need to close that sketch as well. So now I have two sketches, and by the way I can go ahead and hide plane one if I want and I can link those with a loft. And so I want to click on a point on the bottom sketch and then one on the top sketch close to about uh, above that so you don't get any twisting as you go and hit the check mark and there's our basic shape. Okay, Let's hollow it out now using the shell feature and we'll leave 0.10 inches by removing this top face and now we have a nice hollow part. Now finding the volume of this would be uh, rather difficult. You could certainly estimate it but uh, we'll use SolidWorks to do that. So we need to know what the volume was removed though and to do that we'll use the rollback bar. So I'm going to roll back before I did the shell and go to mass properties from the tools menu and I'll see 28 and a half cubic inches. Then if I pull the rollback bar back down and do this again, I'll see the volume of 4.28. So I'm a little over 24 cubic inches, which is uh, short of my 30. So I may want to do a little redesign here. And it also looks a little bit top heavy. So let's make the uh, bottom, which is sketch one, just double click on that. I'm going to change this 1.75 dimension to 2.4 and hit the rebuild. Okay, so we can do the same thing to find the, the uh, new volume. Now if you're doing a lot of this, uh, you might want to add a sensor. So if I right click and hit add sensor and pick volume, this will save me having to choose that tool every time I do this hit the plus sign so it's displayed. So you can see right now the volume is about a little under 5 cubic inches. If I move the rollback bar up and hit rebuild you can see the volume on the sensor changes to 35.3. So this leaves us just a shade over uh, 30 cubic inches. We could uh, fine-tune that a little bit if we wanted but we're close enough. We're at about 30.3 cubic inches so we'll go with that. And I can hide the sensor now just by hitting the minus sign. 
All right, let's make the handle. So I want to go to the front plane and let's just go normal too. And I'm going to sketch three line segments. First one horizontal, then vertical, and then horizontal. Now I don't care where the endpoints are as long as they're well inside the mug. If they came right to the surface of the mug because of the fact that that outer surface is curved, um, that wouldn't quite be enough. So I need to go all the way through and then we'll trim off the parts we don't need. So let's add a couple of dimensions. This dimension is three inches and from this top line to the top surface is three quarters of an inch. And from the origin to this line, this distance is two and a half. Let's add some fillets with the sketch fillet tool. We want the fillets to be one half inch. And so we'll pick these two edges and hit the check mark. Okay, so that sketch I can go ahead and close. This is my sweep path. Now I need a profile, and to do that I need to sketch on a plane perpendicular to this uh, uh, edge here and through that point. So if I click on this line, and now while I'm holding down the control key I also want to pick the end point. Then if I go to features and reference geometry plane, because I picked those two things, the point and the line, it puts a plane in perpendicular to the line through that point, which is what I want. And now I can sketch on that plane a circle, starting at the new origin. You zoom in a little bit. And I want the diameter here to be 3 eighths of an inch, which we can either type in as 0.375 or just enter it as 3 divided by 8 and let SolidWorks do the math for you. And once again we'll close that sketch. So when we're doing these multi-sketch uh, features we need to close both sketch before we do the feature. So we're going to go to a swept boss base. We pick the profile and then the path and hit the check mark. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hide plane 2. Now obviously we went too far and we need to trim away part of this. And so to do that I'm going to start out by picking this surface. and I'm going to create a sketch right on that surface. So let's go ahead and just hit the sketch tool here. And I'm going to use the convert entities tool which will take the edge of this and make it into a, a circle within that sketch. Then I can go to the extruded cut tool and as my type I'll pick up to surface and then select this inner surface and you can see we've trimmed that off now. I have to do the same thing with uh, the one on the bottom zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. So once again I have to pick the surface and to use the uh, convert entities tool I have to open a sketch first. Then I can use convert entities and features extruded cut up to surface and select this surface. And we're almost done Let's put a little fillet. We'll go with a quarter inch fillet here and here and our parts finished. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'll save it to the desktop so I can get to it in just a moment. Because now that we've done that we want to use a program called PhotoView 360 to make it look nice. It's very easy to use. This is a replacement for the uh, PhotoWorks which has been in the older editions. I'll start out by opening the file that I just saved. And next I'll go to Appearances. What do I want this part to be made of? 
Now you can see there's a lot of uh, <coughs> a lot of possibilities here. Uh, metals, painted, plastic. Let's go to glass, and under glossy glass, let's pick blue glass. And all I do is just drag that over onto the part. And then we need an environment. So a lot of possibilities here. This is a mug. Let's put it in the kitchen. I just drag that into the space around the mug. And I can close this now. And you can see it looks pretty nice. But uh, to make it look better, go to the final render here. And you can change some of the settings on this to as far as uh, the quality of the output. But you can see it ends up making a pretty nice looking part. Very easy. And when you're done, as soon as the renderer finishes here, when you're done, you can save this image you just created into a lot of different file formats here.